Hey, I'm Emma, a 29-year-old navigating through what I hoped would be a happily ever after with my husband, Ryan, a sharp 33-year-old investment banker. Before we dive into my story, please don't forget to like and subscribe for more tales from my life's roller coaster. It's been two years since Ryan and I tied the knot. From the outside, our marriage might look like a page out of a glossy magazine, full of love, laughter, and mutual respect. But there's one thing that's been gnawing at me, creating a rift in our otherwise perfect union. His family's annual vacation, a tradition I'm never part of. Ryan, can we talk about this vacation thing again? It's eating me up. I remember pacing our living room, feeling that mix of anxiety and determination. I know it's hard, Emma. They just think it's a bit too soon. You know how private they are. Too soon? It's been two years. I'm your wife, not some distant relative. My voice cracked a bit. Anger, frustration, and a hint of sadness all swirling inside. Look, I hate this too. I'm stuck in the middle here, trying to make both sides happy. Ryan looked genuinely torn, running his hands through his hair in that way he does when he's stressed. And what about me, Ryan? When do I become a priority? I stopped pacing and stood in front of him, trying to gauge his reaction. He sighed, looking away before meeting my eyes. I'll talk to them again, Emma. I promise. Just please give it a bit more time. Time. Always time. But I nodded, swallowing the lump in my throat. Okay, but I'm not just going to sit around. I'm going to make an effort, too. Maybe they need to see more of me, not less. Fast forward to a few weeks later, I'd been to every family gathering, sent thank you notes for dinners, and even helped Ryan's mom with some charity event planning. I was putting myself out there, showing them the Emma that Ryan fell in love with. Then, out of the blue, Ryan's phone rang while we were having dinner. He answered, listened for a moment, and his face changed. It's for you, he said, handing it over with a puzzled look. Hello? Emma, it's Janet, Ryan's mom. I... We owe you an apology. It's been unfair, the way we've treated you about the vacations. I was floored. Thank you, Janet. That means a lot hearing that from you. We'd like to make it up to you. Why don't you join us on the cruise this year? We genuinely want you to come. For a moment, I didn't know what to say. Was this real? Had my efforts actually paid off? Yes, I'd love to join. Thank you, Janet. Hanging up, I turned to Ryan, who was smiling, maybe as relieved as I was. See? I told you. They just needed time to see the real you. But even as we celebrated that small victory, part of me wondered... Was it truly a change of heart, or was there something else behind their sudden invitation? Guess I'd find out soon enough on that cruise. Little did I know, the real challenge was just around the corner. Walking onto that cruise ship, I was a bundle of nerves and excitement. The ocean was sparkling under the sun, and I thought, This is it, Emma. You're finally part of the family. Ryan squeezed my hand as we boarded, and for a moment, I believed everything was turning around. Welcome aboard, Emma. We have a special job just for you. Ryan's sister Claire greeted me with a wide grin. I smiled back, naive and eager. We need someone to help out with the meals and keeping things tidy. You know, just to ease into the whole family thing. At first I didn't quite catch the undertone. Oh sure, I'd love to help out, I responded, thinking it was a way to bond. But as the days unfolded, the reality hit me. Hey Emma, could you take care of the breakfast cleanup? Oh, Emma, the kids made a mess in the lounge. Could you sort it out? It wasn't just helping. I was the designated maid. Even Ryan seemed oblivious, caught up in the fun with everyone else. I was setting the table one evening, the ocean breeze mixing with my brewing frustration, when it clicked. This wasn't about family bonding. This was about using me. I wasn't a guest. I was staff. That night in our cabin, I turned to Ryan. Does it seem odd to you that I'm the only one doing chores here? Emma, they just want to see if you're family material, that's all, he said, dismissing my concern like swatting a fly. Family material? By being their servant? No, this isn't right, Ryan. I'm here to enjoy the vacation as part of your family, not as your help. The next morning, I made a decision. I'd come here to be part of the family, not a housekeeper. So I stopped. No more cleaning, no more cooking. If they saw me lounging by the pool, reading a book, or sipping a cocktail— so be it. I was going to enjoy this vacation as it was meant to be enjoyed. Emma, 
The lunch dishes are piling up, Claire said, her tone now carrying a sharp edge. I'm on vacation, Claire, just like you, I replied without looking up from my novel. The shock on her face was something to see. Ryan got an earful about it later, but something in me had shifted. I wasn't angry anymore. I was clear. Clear that I deserved better than to be manipulated and tested. As the ship sailed the glittering seas, I explored every deck, made friends with other guests, and soaked up the sun, my resolve as strong as the waves crashing against the hull. This wasn't just a rejection of chores. It was a statement. I was Emma, Ryan's wife, not Emma the Aaron girl. Turning away from the family's expectations freed me in a way I hadn't anticipated. It was liberating, watching them realize I wasn't there to serve. And as the days passed, I saw glimpses of what might have been confusion, perhaps respect in their eyes. Maybe they started to see me as an equal, or maybe they just didn't know how to handle a woman who wouldn't bow down. Either way, I spent the rest of that cruise on my terms, learning something vital about myself and the kind of life I wanted to lead. One where I was valued for who I was, not for what I could do for others. The sun was setting, casting long shadows over the deck where I lounged, a book forgotten on my lap. I was soaking in the peace, but beneath the calm surface, a storm was brewing. Ryan approached, his face tense, reflecting the undercurrents of the family's mood since I'd stopped playing the maid. Emma, we need to talk. My family thinks you're being... difficult. His voice was cautious, probing. Difficult? Because I refuse to be their servant? My response was sharp, edged with weeks of built-up frustration. It's just how things are done in our family. You helping out could have made things easier. Ryan shifted uncomfortably, avoiding my gaze. Easier for whom, Ryan? Certainly not for me. I sat up, turning to face him squarely. I came here to be part of your family, not to be exploited. He sighed, running a hand through his hair. I know it's been hard on you, but... But nothing, Ryan. Where have you been in all this? Why haven't you stood up for me? The questions poured out. Each one waited with disappointment. Emma, I... I just wanted to keep the peace. By sacrificing my dignity? The realization stung, and it was clear now more than ever. Your family's approval means more to you than our marriage, doesn't it? That's not fair, Emma. I love you, but they're my family. And I'm supposed to be your family too, Ryan. Your wife. Your priority. My voice softened, but the hurt was palpable. We stood there. The ocean's roar a backdrop to our strained silence. It was clear that Ryan was torn, but it was also clear where his loyalties lay. The chasm between us had widened, filled with unspoken truths and ignored grievances. For the next few days, I continued to explore the cruise ship, engage with other guests, and enjoy my own company. The atmosphere around Ryan's family was frosty. Their disapproving glances and whispers didn't escape me, but they no longer affected me. I had found a certain peace in asserting my independence. One evening, as I returned to our cabin, I found Ryan waiting. We need to sort this out, Emma. I don't want to lose you. Then start by standing by me, Ryan. I need you to really see me, to fight for me as much as you do for their approval. He looked at me then, really looked, and for a moment, I saw the man I married, the man who promised to be my partner in all things. This isn't just about a vacation anymore, is it? His voice was low, almost defeated. No, it's about respect, about being valued and loved. I was resolute, my decision firm. I won't settle for less, Ryan. Not from them, not from you. That night marked a turning point. Whether our marriage could weather this storm was uncertain. But what was certain was my refusal to lose myself in the process. I was Emma, deserving of respect and love, not conditional acceptance based on servitude. As the cruise neared its end, I was stronger, more confident in who I was and what I deserved. The final days were a testament to my newfound strength, a prelude to the choices I knew I had to make once we returned to shore. Stepping off the cruise ship felt like coming up for air after being submerged in turbulent waters. I was back on solid ground, but the ground beneath me had shifted. I was not the same Emma who had boarded that ship. I was stronger, more aware of my own worth. The ride home was quiet. Ryan tried to make conversation, perhaps in a bid to bridge the gap between us. But my mind was elsewhere, focused on the future and all the decisions it held. Once home, I called my best friend, Sophie. 
I need to get away for a while, I told her. Clear my head, think about everything. Road trip? Sophie's voice was instantly supportive, a lifeline thrown in turbulent seas. Exactly what I need. The next few days were a blur of planning. Maps sprawled across the table, destinations pinned, and playlists curated. The excitement of the upcoming trip was a balm to my bruised spirit. It was more than just a getaway. It was a declaration of my newfound resolve to live a life where I was respected and valued. Sophie and another close friend, Mara, joined me. As we drove away from the city, the skyline shrinking in the rearview mirror, I felt a weight lifting. We laughed and sang along to our favorite songs, the road unwinding before us like the promise of a new beginning. We stopped at small towns, explored local diners, and took pictures against breathtaking landscapes. With each mile, I felt more detached from the hurt and closer to understanding what I needed from life and from love. One evening, seated around a campfire under a starlit sky, Mara handed me a marshmallow on a stick, her expression serious. You seem different, Emma. More yourself, if that makes sense. It does, I replied, watching the flames dance. I think I lost a part of myself trying to fit into what Ryan and his family wanted. No more. I deserve someone who stands by me, not someone who stands by while I'm pushed aside. Sophie squeezed my shoulder. So, what's your plan? Taking a deep breath, the smoky air filling my lungs, I said, I'm going to file for divorce. It's not just about the vacation. It's about every moment I felt less than in their eyes and his inability to see me as his equal. The decision was freeing yet heavy with the gravity of its implications, but I knew it was the right one. Returning from the road trip, I felt rejuvenated, ready to face what came next. I contacted a lawyer, a gentle yet firm woman, who promised to guide me through the process with understanding and care. As I sat in her office, initiating the divorce proceedings, it felt surreal, a chapter closing, a new one beginning. It was bittersweet, the end of what I once believed was forever. But as I signed the papers, I wasn't just signing away a marriage. I was signing towards a future where my worth wasn't contingent on someone else's approval. I walked out into the sunlight, a free woman, a resilient woman. The road ahead would have its challenges, but I was ready to meet them head on, fortified by self-respect and the support of those who truly valued me. Here's to new beginnings, to roads less traveled, and to the enduring strength of a woman who knows her worth. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories from my path to independence. That's the end of Emma's journey of self-discovery and standing up for her worth. What do you think about Emma's decision to take control of her life and end her marriage? Was it an act of self-respect? Or could she have done more to reconcile with Ryan and his family? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I'm eager to hear your perspectives on balancing personal dignity with family dynamics. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed the story, and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Your engagement helps us grow and continue providing content that resonates with you. Thank you for watching.